Good morning. I want to do a follow-up on a video that I had promised you earlier. Uh, I did that video called What's Tripping You Up? And uh, in reference to the flesh and the world and the devil and, and how really maybe I'd been leaning towards the, how much the flesh affects our life uh, to the other side of that spectrum, uh, how much power and uh, evil influence comes upon us and the world in general uh, from the devil himself. I'd like to introduce you to a little publication called Our Daily Bread. It's from RBC Ministries, about the same age as I am. I think they've been uh, maybe even a little older. They've been around a long time anyway. Uh, a great ministry. They, they have spots on the radio and they put out this publication, Our Daily Bread, which you can get uh, online now and it's a wonderful devotion. Just small daily articles with scripture to go along with them. And, uh, and this has a, an article that I wanted to not necessarily read to you. It's just a small article, but it has a, a very wonderful point about how much power God has and, uh, and, and how that's manifest in the world and, and how it has been manifest in, in Old Testament times and throughout, you know, it started at creation. <laughs> he spoke the universe into existence. Anyway, uh, I titled this, this video The Unseen Realm uh, because there is a, a spiritual realm. Fortunately, God's overall, but in that realm, in that unseen world, the devil exists and he has demons, uh, fallen angels that exist with him. <laughs> and they are very dangerous. And I want to try to explain a little bit about how dangerous that realm is and how much effect it can have on our lives. This article was from February 23rd and it's titled The Unseen World because the unseen world is uh, of more importance and even more real than this temporal world. Even though we know this, the solidity of this piece of wood here is real, the molecules were created by God himself, uh, but this temporal world does not mean as much as the spiritual world. God is spirit and he dwells in that world. Unfortunately, there are fallen angels that uh, <laughs> that dwell there also and have a great effect upon mankind. The scripture reference for this uh, is Numbers 22 and we're going to read 21 through 31. This is probably going to be a pretty long video. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can, but I just want to relate these things to you. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers we're going to pull to. Numbers 22. But first we're going to look at this article in the Daily Bread did. How much uh, power and how sometimes God's power is manifest in lives. Uh, we're going to look at a an account that you might have heard of before when uh, Balaam's donkey, Balaam's ass, <laughs> spoke to him. Numbers 22, verses 21 through 31. And Balaam rose up, Balaam was a prophet, prophet of God, and Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. He was doing what we oftentimes do, <laughs> and sometimes we're spiritually affected uh, by the devil, and sometimes we're just spiritually affected by our desire to run our own lives instead of letting God run them. Balaam was going a different direction than God wanted him to. And God's anger was kindled because he was 
Uh, oh, excuse me. Verse 22, And God's anger was kindled because he went, Balaam went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord and knew the, that God's presence was there. There was things happening in the spiritual realm, but Balaam was not perceiving that. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyard and a wall being on the side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she trust, thrust herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. <laughs> Have you ever seen an ornery horse, uh, had an ornery horse rub you up against a tree or a fence? That's what this donkey was doing. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with his staff. He took a big stick to the donkey. He didn't know what was going on. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there a sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee. I'm so mad at you, I just, I just cut your head off. <laughs> you know, he's lost his temper, at this poor servant of a donkey. And then what happens? And then the ass said unto Balaam, <laughs> Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? Had I not always served you well? And Balaam said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Uh, many oftentimes in the Old Testament when we see the phrase the angel of the Lord we know it to be a pre-incarnate manifestation of Christ himself that it may very well be God himself. Uh, <laughs> and Balaam fell flat on his face after he saw what was going on. But this example is just to show you that yes, God the creator of the universe <laughs> does some pretty strange and wonderful <laughs> and odd and funny things. This donkey was talking to this man. Now we've seen a horse talk on TV and we know that wasn't real. But I have to believe that this is real. This is a literal account of Balaam the prophet and this donkey speaking to him. And it shows us how much power God has over all things. But the reason for this video is to take us to a different place. We know God is the creator and he has power over all things. Well, that's good. <laughs> but the devil, Satan himself, has a lot of power. And we want to take a look at that. Uh, and you know, I spoke about the flesh and the world and the devil. And we'll look at this Ephesians 6.12 here. The Lord tells us uh, in Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians 6.12 that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6.12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not even our own flesh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, yes, 
our flesh is affected and does affect us. But what's really affecting us is temptation. And temptation was brought on by the devil himself. We're going to look at that a little bit later on here in Genesis. But I want to uh, read to you a portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 4 verses uh, 1 through 11 about the manifestation of Satan's power in this world. This first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 4. I hope you have your Bibles open and are going along with me. That's why I didn't mark any of these places as mine. And uh, a courteous preacher, e even in a good, fine, big church, will uh, give his congregation time to turn their Bibles uh, to the same place. We need to handle the Word of God. It is alive, and it means so much to us. I read to you from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle in the temple, of the temple, excuse me, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone, lest any time you should be harmed. And Jesus said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This is an amazing portion of scripture, and I, I hope you noticed what was going on there. There's two verses in particular that really stand out to me and speak to the power that the devil has. Now, in verse 3 of Matthew, we see uh, where Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist, uh, <laughs> and the Spirit came down upon him. It says in verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in who I am well pleased. Jesus had willingly relinquished his power, it seems, through his childhood and his young adulthood. But at the time of his baptism, the whole power of God laid right back on him again through the Holy Spirit. And, and so even though uh, all of God's power uh, indwelt him again, we move on to verse 4, or chapter 4, and what do we see? We saw the devil tempting him as he did. We're going to read about that in Genesis, I talked to you. Uh, bringing doubt and tempting the Lord God himself, our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then what did he do? He not only tried to tempt him, but he took him. He taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. He set him up on the highest part of the temple. He said, cast yourself down. 
that's a lot of power to yield that much power of course we know God had to allow this but he had the power to physically take Jesus up and set him on the highest part of the temple and then he set him up on a high mountain physically <laughs> projected their bodies up on this this high mountain in this temple that's a lot of power do you have power enough to set me up in this tree or up on that house or up on the highest mountain and then offer me all the kingdoms of the world because he is the prince of the power of the air the ruler of this world really and that's why there is so much influence from him but it's amazing that God allowed this and and I we know that this temptation was so that we would know that he was tempted in all points in everything he was offered everything yet refused sin but in this also we see how much power the dark side has this is not light it's darkness and it has a lot of power and that's why I'm making this video and following up on that other one uh, we have to understand how much power the devil has against us let's move to Genesis 3 and uh, verses 1 through 4 and we're gonna see when he first manifests this power now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea hath God said he brings doubt ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God hath said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die O foolish woman God has lied to you God hasn't lied to you but Satan will first he brought doubt yea hath God said and then he brings the lie supported by the doubt he'll do that in your life if you allow him we must not we must not he first appeared there in the garden and manifest that power that doubt those lies and he will continue to do that but let's read first John 4 4 clear towards the back of the Bible almost to revelations we read in first John 4 4 ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is God and the power of God that dwelleth within you that resides in you uh, the Bible tells us know ye not that you are the temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwelleth within you he lives within us as born-again Christians that's where the Holy Spirit dwells that's where the kingdom of God resides here on earth is within us so greater is he who is in us than he who is of the world and we know that we're we're told that by the living and true Word of God and confirmed by the Holy Spirit working in our lives praise God hallelujah <laughs> there's no better knowledge than that but does Satan give up no he will buffet us and he will tempt us and he will tell us lies throughout our lives 
And that's uh, why we come to this last scripture, Ephesians 6, once again, verses uh, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, verse 10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Don't try to fight the devil by yourself. And certainly don't ever, certainly don't ever make fun of him. I've made that mistake. He'll count it against you. Somehow he hears and knows. There's stuff going on all around us that we don't know about. Ephesians 6.10 It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. God protects us and He gives us armor to protect us. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this high place. You see, he tried to push me over right there. No, I know he didn't. <laughs> the ground's a little uneven here. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to make jokes about him either, because uh, he may come and try to push us over. But God is describing here him and his power and what we have to use against that power. Stand there, verse 14. Oh, excuse me, verse 13. Wherefore, take ye unto the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the shield of faith and this which with wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit Praying in the Spirit, in His power, and in His knowledge, not through your own. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Pray for yourself, pray for all the saints that are saved, that they may be protected from the devil, protected from the devil himself. It's a wonderful picture, isn't it? A Christian dressed in holy armor. The helmet of salvation placed upon his head by Jesus Christ. Amen. I just pray that you might go through this again. I've left this up here so you could pause that and write these references down. But we're just looking at God's power manifest. Uh, him telling us that the devil's power is real and true we, we see that manifest even in uh, the human life of God on earth uh, how he affected humans right from the start with doubt and lie greater is he than who is in us than he who is of the world the devil is of this world and the whole armor of God. Put it on. Live with it on. Put it on as soon as you get out of bed. <laughs> Pray to the Lord God in heaven above and be blessed in that. God bless you and we'll see you next time.